Okay, you welcome. This lecture is about project cost management and it is, it's an extension of our previous lecture on project budgeting. So here we're going to uh, look at some more concern areas as far as uh, determining the cost of a project is concerned. And then we'll also look at something called the earned value management technique. And I'll give you the brief on how the earned value management technique functions. Uh, and then I'll uh, have uh, you do some exercises using that technique. Um, so as we um, have already talked about this before, so I'll be quite brief uh, and to the point uh, in this lecture. So once again, the concern is to figure out how to determine the cost of the project and then to lay down the foundation where we can monitor and evaluate the information that's coming back to us uh, to determine whether there is a need to exercise any type of cost control. Now, the objective of project cost management is number one, to make sure that the budget that has been determined for the project is uh, exercised appropriately uh, and that we don't end up spending more or less money than what we had budgeted for. Uh, pretty much making sure that what we wanted to get accomplished is accomplished in the amount of money that we had budgeted for the project. Right? Um, now there's going to be a lot of uh, concern with the cost of resources that are going to be required in order to complete different activities um, and the effect that our decisions are going to have upon the cost of uh, using the different types of uh, resources across the life cycle of, of the project. So we're not only thinking about the overall cost uh, of the project, but we're also thinking about the cost of each activity uh, and how that contributes to the overall effect as well. Um, most prospective financial impact of using the product is outside the project scope. So what happens with the uh, final product is not going to be a concern for us in the project, rather that's going to be uh, something that becomes an operational concern uh, and something that uh, the normal organization will deal with once the project has come to a uh, conclusion. Now, uh, developing the cost management plan, we have to make sure that we're talking to all the relevant stakeholders and that we're taking into account all the controllable and uncontrollable costs that we may have in the picture. And at the same time, we're thinking about the different types of risks uh, that we would be encountering and laying down mechanisms to make sure that we mitigate those risks. Different steps are involved in project cost management, uh, and these include uh, number one, estimating the cost, number two, creating the budget, and number three is uh, finally the cost control. So uh, the primary objective is to number one, uh, come up with estimates of uh, the costs of activities and material and other resources, um, combine them up together to formulate the budget, and then once the budget has been laid down, the project will be um, in the execution period. So you're going to start comparing the actual against the plan and wherever you find any deviation, then in those cases, cost control mechanisms will be uh, put down and then we'll uh, make sure that we don't overspend. Right? Um, how do we make our estimates better? Well, that's a very um, easy idea. Uh, in the sense that you know uh, the, what we have talked about so far is, is this idea of decomposing and overcoming the complexity of the project by breaking it down into smaller and smaller pieces so we had uh, something that we created in, in the scope area called word breakdown structure where we broke the project into smaller deliverables and then those deliverables were uh, broken down to a level where they became assignable. So that is to say that we had the work uh, breakdown structure at the decomposed at the product level and then later on also at the level of the, of the process so which were uh, called as the work packages, right? So since we have uh, this thought in mind that we have a WBS and somebody has gone through the motion of creating this WBS, and therefore we should use the WBS in order to make our uh, estimates, right? Um, who should make the estimates for us? Well, definitely is going to be the people 
people involved in uh, working on the work packages. So you ask them to give you estimates of the cost. Um, if you have any historical records available, um, for example, your organization has already done a project before and certain activities are similar to the activities that have already taken place before. So you can use those historical records if they are available to you. Um, Costs should be uh, managed to the estimates um, and a cost should be kept and not changed. Uh, so once you make the estimate, you sort of have a plan uh, and you have to make sure that you um, are doing things according to your plan, right? And once you have made the plan, then that plan becomes rigid in the sense that we freeze it uh, and we use it as a barometer so if things are getting out of control, uh, we don't necessarily uh, find it very easy to change our uh, cost plan. So rather we should keep to it uh, and experience the overspending wherever we experience it and then control for the overspending that we have made in one activity and, and some other later activities, right? Uh, plans should be revisited or revised as necessary. So it depends on what's happening in your general environment. So if uh, your plans become uh, absolutely uh, rubbish, so in that case, then replanning is a necessity. So that should be uh, there in your mind as well. Uh, and lastly, that corrective actions or preventive actions. Well, of course, you take preventive actions, but whatever you can take some sort of a corrective action, then you should uh, take that into account and you should implement that corrective action, right? So if you find that you're going to end up overspending because of some reason and there's some correction possible, you should uh, take that correction so you don't actually get uh, to overspend uh, beyond your budget amount. Um, what does the cost management plan do? Well, uh, it number one answers this question, how would I go about planning the cost for my project, right? Uh, how do I manage the project cost baseline and any variances that I, I encounter? Um, the part uh, of the project, man it, it becomes a part of your project management plan. The cost management plan is a part of the bigger plan, which is called your project management plan. So we integrate um, this into the project management plan. Uh, and it also talks about how uh, the different estimates are going to be stated. So we'll be discussing that a little bit later. Um, and then what will be the reporting format uh, regarding whenever we are actually expending the money, how do we report that, right? Um, so uh, here, uh, how the estimates should be stated, right? So the idea is precision level, right? Um, there must be some sort of guidelines um, regarding this and it, it's going to depend upon industry to industry and also upon your organization and its, uh, its processes as well. Uh, but the recommendation of the standardization bodies in project management is that the estimate should be rounded up to the nearest 100 uh, or the nearest 1000. Right? So we seldom find projects and budgets to be of the nature that, you know, my project budget is going to be $123. Right. So we would rather uh, round it down to $120 or round it up right, to $130. But uh, the idea is that we round it up to the nearest $100. So $123 is uh, uh, nearest to $100 and or $200. So we should either state our project budget as uh, $100 or uh, we should state it as 200. Right? So this will apply, this precision level will apply at the level of the units and then uh, also when the overall uh, budget is, is uh, added up together, we can also uh, then um, sort of resolve the figures so they are whole numbers in either hundreds or tops. Uh, the unit of measurement is concerned about um, how staff hours are going to be measured how staff days are going to be measured, how long is going to be a working week, what will be a lump sum amount of payment and when that will be uh, made, will it be made on a weekly basis or uh, at, at the end or are you going to make it on 
50% at the beginning and 50% distributed across um, the, your, your expense um, chain, right? So that's going to be your unit of measure. Uh, organizational procedure link means that because we have a WBS and we have a uh, dictionary along with it, so there's a chart of accounts and there's a code of accounts available. So the, the estimates that we're making should be linked with that uh, control account and the uh, chart of accounts that we had created. So that would be the idea of organization procedure links. And then control threshold is this idea that, you know, when do you start getting worried about the expenses that you're making? For example, if you and I make a plan of, uh, of going out for dinner, uh, and our plan is to spend $50 on our dinner, right? Are we going to get worried uh, if our bill rises up to $51? Are we going to be concerned if it rises up to $55? Right? So what is that threshold value after which you're going to say, well, okay, now things have gone out of control and I need to do something about this, right? So that's the variance threshold um, and that forms an indicator for us uh, at which point will we start worrying about the expenses that we are uh, actually incurring. So we have to uh, think about these threshold values in, in the time of our planning. Uh, and when the uh, execution begins, these threshold values become important for us because these will be uh, then points of action for us, right? Now, making our estimates requires that we're uh, a little bit aware about market conditions. So questions such as, you know, where in the market is a particular product or um, individual or service or material available? Who is it that is selling this item? You know, and under what terms and conditions are they going to make those available to us? So uh, cost estimation requires that we have a fairly good idea of the market conditions. Um, and then in certain industries, so specifically industries such as construction, We've got commercial databases in which um, in which we get um, estimates of, of different material uh, made available to us. So if you have certain commercial databases available, uh, then that would be a good uh, place to get some handy estimates without having to go into the marketplace. Somebody has already collected that information for you so you can uh, utilize. Right? Um, you should also have some of these things on your hand when making your uh, project budgets. You should have your project scope statement with you. You should have your work breakdown structure, your work breakdown dictionary, and also your project management plan. So the scope statement means that you know if you've got an activity in front of you, you're, you're making sure that that uh, activity contributes somehow uh, directly to the scope of project, if it doesn't, then we're not going to in include that activity, and we shouldn't be including its cost in our estimates, right? The WBS and WBS dictionary is uh, simple because it uh, shows us the breakdown of the project into small pieces, so uh, we can ensure that we don't miss anything, and at the same time, uh, it's going to help us to uh, create organizational procedure linkages as well. And the project management plan is uh, important because uh, in this plan, um, an estimated budget of the project is already stated, uh, even though it's um, got a huge order of magnitude associated with it, but we use the project management plan um, as a baseline, uh, and we sort of mold our project uh, to fit, the, uh, to give us a sort of a more um, accurate level of uh, estimate of the uh, expense that we will incur in the project. Right? Now there's different types of uh, techniques that are used for estimating the costs of a project. Uh, one is the analogous estimation, also known as top-down estimation. And uh, we can also call this as heuristic estimates. Uh, so these are based primarily upon our past experiences. So as I talked about this previously in the project budgeting area, uh, I'm not going to spend more time in explaining how an analogous or a heuristic estimate would work. Um, then we've got parametric uh, modeling as well, and we talked about this also. Um, if you listen to the previous lecture, we talked about um, the cost of TVs, and you know the uh, saying that one 
uh, square inch of a TV will cost one dollar or one rupee. So we can multiply that by the number of inches of the TV set and we get a fairly good idea of how much a TV would cost. And uh, if we part, uh, you know, a 40 inch TV, and is going to cost us one inch uh, rupee per inch. So we can come up with an uh, estimate of how much that 40 inch TV will cost us as well. Right? So that's the idea behind parametric estimation. Bottom up estimation is when you're using up the, using the WBS specifically to estimate the cost of activities all the way uh, from the bottom of the WBS, from the work packages adding uh, upward. Right, so that would be the bottom-up estimation. Um, and we can use uh, computerized tools such as spreadsheets and other softwares that can help us to uh, create our project budget, right? Um, a couple of words about analogous estimation, which is that it is quick, but uh, it is a little bit less accurate. Uh, tasks don't need to be identified and you don't have to go into uh, a lot of detail. Uh, so it's going to be less costly to make and uh, it sort of gives the project manager a fairly good idea of the expectations, right? Uh, and But it doesn't consider uh, some extraneous factors into consideration. Uh, so therefore, it's a quick and dirty way of coming up with a budget, right? Uh, Bottom-up estimation uh, is more accurate, you know, gains buy-in from the time, but is going to be more involved, more costly. Uh, and so forth. So the thought is that whenever you get the opportunity to use a, um, a top-down estimate uh, using a heuristic, that would be a good thing, go for it. Uh, but wherever you don't have that opportunity, the idea is that you can use bottom-up estimation. But as I talked to you in the previous lecture about budgeting, um, the bottom-up estimation is something that is uh, seldom used, right? Mostly the top-down estimation is what we find to be uh, of prevalent use in our projects. Um, the cost of resources, well, uh, they, they should be determined per unit of use, right? So we, we can say that, you know, uh, one man hour will cost this much, right? Or one hour of work will cost this much. So this is the unit cost of it. Uh, salary should be known for the individuals or we should have a group rate. So uh, not all individuals are going to get paid equally, rather their experience and education and so forth is going to determine um, their uh, rates of payment. So we should be aware uh, of uh, how much we are going to be paying to each individual at a unit uh, level. So maybe, you know, an individual will be paid $12 an hour or something of that nature, right? Um, different components uh, comprise the cost of uh, resources and these include the base rate, so that would be the base pay, then the tax rate, uh, benefits that you may be allocating, and uh, additional overheads as well. So all these combine together to uh, help us to determine the resource cost. Um, different project management softwares can be used. Um, also, we should uh, know something about vendor bid analysis. So if somebody is going to be bidding, uh, uh, you know, for different types of material that we want to purchase. So we should uh, be also good at um, analyzing those bids. Um, and we should also include the cost of quality in our uh, estimates as well, and cost of quality would include uh, both the preventive cost and also the corrective cost that would be incurred while the project is, uh, is ongoing. Right? Uh, reserve analysis is something that we have to consider as well. Reserve analysis would mean uh, some additional sum of money uh, in our pocket, uh, which we would be uh, able to use an unforeseeable type of circumstances so that will be known as contingency amount. So that's going to require some mathematical um, calculations, but we should uh, calculate how much money we should have in reserve with us. Uh, and our past experiences help us, right, um, to figure out what our contingency amount is going to be. Um, it's basically a recognition of the cost of risks, right? So these are sort of the foreseeable uh, risks that we can encounter 
and you can call them as insurable risk as well, uh, as opposed to the unforeseeable risk, uh, which we categorize in the area of um, acts of God. So for such types of uh, you know uh, events, unforeseeable events, we can't plan for any contingencies. Uh, definitely, your project budget is going to be uh, completely out of whack in the case of uh, the unforeseeable risk, right? Um, and you can uh, aggregate across several activities and uh, add up things, uh, you know, move towards the top, and then uh, finally come up with a overall budget. Uh, and uh, buffer activity in, in the critical path method, right? So uh, you should be uh, adding for this uh, budgeting and, and, and the planning process. And if it's going to be uh, a part of your overall project, you know, rather than saying that I'll do the budgeting first and then I'll uh, begin my project with my set of activities. If you think that your planning process is a part of your project, then you should also include uh, time for this in your uh, credit report as well, right? Um, here's a figure and this simply shows you this bottom-up estimation and we're saying we'll, we'll estimate at the level of the activities and we'll add them up and we'll get as the cost of the work packages, we'll add those up so we get the control account, we get add those up, we get the project cost and we put the contingency, the cost baseline, the management reserve and finally we get the overall uh, cost of the project. Right. So the final outcome or the final result of this is that we're going to have a handy estimate uh, and that's going to become a planning tool for us and it will uh, become a part of our project management plan uh, and it will help us to uh, figure out then uh, basically uh, risk areas as well and we'll uh, put those into the picture also uh, and then it will become a uh, control mechanism. Right. Uh, now, a couple of words about management reserves. So this would be sort of like the contingency amounts that we have. So we have uh, here two S curves, the one at the top and the one at the bottom. The one at the top is the cost baseline, right? So this is what we're saying um, is the expense that we're going to incur. Uh, the expected cash flows is the amount of money uh, that we are going to be spending uh, at different points of time, right? So wherever there's a difference that exists between the two of them, um, that is where um, basically we have our management reserves coming into the picture, right? Um, the cost control is something that we have to be concerned about. Um, and there's a, a, a mechanism for this of, of how we can evaluate our performance as, uh, as far as the execution of the project is concerned. Uh, but that requires that monitoring is, is ongoing and data is being evaluated. Uh, but we must have a certain technique on hand that will help us to uh, determine how well we are spending uh, against our plan. Right? So we'll talk about that shortly. Uh, but there is going to be uh, performance reports that have to be created. Uh, and these are going to organize and summarize information on the project status and uh, our progress. Um, there will be different types of reports going through different types of stakeholders, and that's going to have our accomplishments listed in them uh, regarding our cost, schedule, quality, uh, uh, any type of variances, et cetera, are also going to be spoken about in these reports uh, as well. Right? Um, inputs to cost control, well, um, the cost baseline is an input to the control mechanism because it tells us how much the budget is. Um, performance reports are going to be an input, so we have to meet uh, the performance uh, criteria or uh, even exceed the performance criteria. Right? And there's different types of mentalities that we have when uh, approaching uh, our projects and the way that we expense our money as well. Um, and it depends upon your uh, idea of control and your uh, willingness to uh, experience um, uncertainty. Um, uh, so the mentality is going to be different depending upon the nature of your organization and its mentality. 
um, we can have a 50-50 uh, mentality or a 50-50 rule, which means that you know we consider a task to be 50% completed when it begins, and then the remaining 50% completed whenever it comes to a completion. So if we take that mentality, then we'll pay half of the money at the beginning of the project and half of the money at the end, right? We can have a 2080 mentality where we pay 20% of the amount at the beginning of the project and 80% of the amount is expensed across uh, the uh, rest of the life cycle of the project. Or we could have a 0100 in which case we don't pay any money at the beginning. Rather, we say we're going to pay all the money towards the end of it, right? Um, we also have to consider change requests that are coming about. Uh, so this is something that will normally happen during the execution period. So if any change request happens, so we need to then update our cost management plan accordingly. Um, and different tools and techniques are there for control mechanism. So we should uh, use them um, and then we can uh, use different computer uh, programs, etc. as well. That will help us to keep track of our uh, expenses and help us to uh, match our expenses against our plan, right? Uh, so finally, we come down to something called the EVM, which is the earned value management technique. So I would like you to remember that earned value management technique is a control mechanism, uh, and it is also an evaluatory process, uh, and it's also going to be a communication tool as well. Right? So the earned value management technique for the most part is going to be first an evaluation tool and it will show us whether we need to exercise control or not, right? Um, before we jump into that, just keep in mind that uh, estimates being made during the projects are uh, having a order of magnitude associated with them. Estimates that we make at the beginning of the project, specifically when we're writing the project management plan, have a huge order of magnitude about minus plus minus 25 to plus minus 75%. Um, but as we uh, go forward and uh, make our estimates better, the accuracy level increases. And our final, final budget that we come up with is having an order of magnitude uh, from plus minus 5% to plus minus 10%. So the variance reduces significantly, right? Uh, so earned value management technique is uh, not uh, uh, too easy and it's not too difficult. We just need to understand a couple of terminologies first, uh, and then we'll do some exercises um, and put this technique in, in action. Right? So we have something called PV, uh, nothing to do with the present value of money, but it is the planned value. So the PV is going to be the amount of money uh, that we say that this is our plan of uh, how much we plan to spend, right? So for example, I may say that, you know, uh, we're going to have dinner and our plan is to spend 2,000 rupees, right? So that 2,000 rupees becomes the planned value. It is the estimated value of the work planned to be done. So what will happen when we actually uh, eat that dinner is that we will earn some. Uh, we are going to pay that 2000 but we're going to get back something, and that is the earnings. So what are we getting back as a result of eating that dinner is that we're going to earn some value. That is called the earned value. So hopefully if I spend 2000 uh, and I get a good dinner, I will probably issue the statement at the end of that, that dinner that it was worth that 2000 rupees. So if that is the case, then we're saying that the plan was to spend the 2000 and I actually earned 2000 worth of value when I spend that 2000, right? So spending that 2000 is the actual cost, right? So my plan was to spend 2000 and I got back 2000 worth of value. That's my earned value. And I actually spent 2000 right? That would be then the actual cost. It would so happen that my plan was that I should have 2000 in my pocket. I go out for dinner. I get a beautiful dinner, which is worth more than 2000 And the bill comes and they say, well, you know, we've got some sort of a sale going on or some sort of, a, you know, a, 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 a
promotion going on. And because of that, that dinner cost me 1500. So my actual cost is then 1500. My plan was 2000. And how much value have I earned? I've still earned 2000 worth of value, right? So this is what we are playing with uh, as, as far as the acronyms are concerned. And they, they combine together to form different formulas. Right, so the point here is to sort of understand these. PV is the planned value. How much you are planning to to get done? How much work do you estimate to get uh, done? That is the planned value. EV is how much you earn in value when that work is actually completed. AC is the cost incurred for doing that particular work. Right? Budget at completion is how much did we budget for the total project effort? Budget at completion would be the uh, figure at the end of the project. This is how much we have budgeted to spend by the end of the project. That is the budget at completion. Estimate at completion, what do we currently expect the total project to cost? So the budget at completion is at the end of the project. Estimate at completion is somewhere in the middle of the project, let's suppose we're, we're checking our performance, we're saying, well, if I have performed this way up to this point, how much do I estimate now that my project will be, uh, uh, how much more money do I need to complete my project, so to speak, right? So that's my estimate at completion. Estimate to completion as, from this point on, how much more do we expect it to cost us to finish that project? So the budget at completion is, is the final budget. The estimate at completion is us estimating how much we will spend, uh, depending upon the progress that we're giving now. Uh, if we continue this way, how much will we spend by the end of the project? And the estimate to complete is that, well, if we're going slow, then how much more money do we need to complete that project uh, in, in that given amount of time period, right? So that's the estimate to uh, complete. And the variance that completion is how much over or under budget we're going to be, right? So let's just sort of keep these ideas in the back of our mind and now have a look at some of the formulas here, right? So we've got cost variance. Cost variance is earned value minus the actual cost. Schedule variance is earned value minus the planned value. Cost performance index. Index means that there's going to be something divided by something. So in this case, uh, the cost performance uh, index is the earned value divided by the actual cost. The schedule performance index is the earned value divided by the uh, planned value. And the estimate at completion has its own formulas. Estimate to complete has its own formula. So you can uh, have a read over this. I'm not going to explain all of these in detail now. Rather, they will become uh, more apparent when we actually uh, do some hands-on exercises. So they will become more easier for you at that time. Right? So um, here's the thought. Um, the planned value is how much the plan is uh, to acquire by doing the work, right? How much value are we planning to, to gain? If we look at uh, the project today, then uh, what is the budget at completion? How much should we, do we estimate that this project is going to uh, consume when it completes? That's the budget at completion, right? That's at the end. Um, the actual cost is how much we are spending, right? The planned value is how much we plan to spend and the actual cost is how much we actually ended up spending. So if we check our performance today, so we will then see the estimate at completion. So if we continue this way, how much money will we, would we have spent uh, by the end of the project? That's the estimate of completion. And the estimate to completion is, from this point forward, how much more money do we need to complete that project? That's the estimate to complete, right? So I'll um, finish off this lecture here, uh, and the next step is to do some exercises so that these uh, abstract terms become more uh, realistically helpful for us. 
and we can understand them in more clear uh, details as well. Right? So thank you very much. I'll stop this lecture.